Welcome back to the channel, and I hope you are doing well wherever you are. This is the first of many episodes regarding essay writing. In these episodes, I'm going to offer some guidance in how to write an academic essay and offer some simple advice and tips that hopefully you can use in your own writing. By adopting these ideas, hopefully it will help you achieve first class grades in your assignments. Before we get started, it's important to note that while I'll try and offer some simple tips to writing, there's actually no set template for how an essay should be written. Each essay or assignment will have their own nuances and challenges that you need to consider to ensure that the answer is well written, shows good understanding, is clear to follow, and shows critical thinking. While I will offer some tips to help achieve these things, you should always ensure you check with your lecturer about what they are expecting from you in your assignment. Additionally, it's important to say that I'm not a master of writing, though I believe there are some tips I can share with you. But ultimately, good writing comes from learning from a variety of different sources and taking on board the comments of a range of people who examine your work. So you should also seek out advice from your lecturers and consider the feedback given to you on your coursework. In this episode, we're going to consider what is meant by an introduction to a psychological essay and how to put together a first-class introduction. Let's dive right into it. In case you're not sure what an introduction is, an introduction in a psychological essay is something that sets up the assignment question you've been set. It is generally a brief paragraph that aims to provide context to the question at hand. When I like to think about an introduction, often as a marker, I'm considering two things. Let's start with the first one. The first thing I consider is the length of the introduction. Introductions in general are supposed to be quite brief. They do not provide the most essential information in the essay and merely serve as a vehicle to setting up the main content you will cover in relation to the question. As such, you should avoid using too many words here and you should save these words as much as possible for the main body, which is where you will want to be more detailed and cover a good amount of content to ensure the question is well answered. Although there is no strict set number of words to use when writing an introduction, I think perhaps a good rule of thumb is to ensure you're using somewhere between five and 10% of your words here. So if you have a 1500 word essay, then somewhere between 75 to 150 words is a pretty good ballpark. The next important issue for an introduction is that it has a good structure. And in general, when I think about writing an introduction for any piece of work, I think about it having three key beats. The first beat, is setting the scene. What I mean by this is that you should provide some brief information that gives the issue at the center of your question some sort of context. Because we want to keep our introduction short, we should only be doing a few sentences here. For example, if our question were about prejudice reduction towards a certain group, we might want to provide some brief context to how prevalent such a prejudice is in society. The second beat to consider is the issue at hand. What I mean by this is that often your question will be asking you to think of some sort of problem or issue. For example, it might be about how to reduce prejudice, like in our last example. Or it might be considering whether Milgram's studies provide good support for the idea that people will merely follow authority and obey orders. The goal here is to now steer that scene setting context towards the heart of your question and set up the problem or issue that your assignment is getting you to think about. The third beat is then to consider what your aim is in the assignment. In some cases, it can just be fine to state that this essay will consider and just explain what you intend to cover. That's fine, as it at least provides some direction and focus to your essay. However, I often think it's even better to outline your argument to the question here. This is known as your thesis statement. The reason for doing so is it gives the reader insight into what you might plan to argue in your main body, which can help follow the essay a bit more clearly. Moreover, it is a good habit to get into because it will remind you that the goal of essay writing is not just to describe studies, theories and information, but to use them to support some sort of argument. By setting your argument out early, it will hopefully help you write a main body that is more critical and analytical as you seek to support such an argument throughout. So here is an example introduction regarding the essay question, does people's self-esteem impact how they react to failure? Now, the first thing to note about this introduction is that it's a little bit on the long side. If what's not gravely long, it does certainly reduce the amount of space that we would have in the main body to elaborate on the more pertinent information if we look at the actual introduction itself, there are parts where we can kind of see where 
this kind of three beat structure that I mentioned is sort of present. Although each individual section is not as uh, strong and clear as it could be. So in the first section here, sort of around up to here, this is our setting the scene. Although in general, it's a little bit vague uh, and too broad. Saying things like human behavior is complex and can be very difficult to understand. Well, that can be just sort of put into any sort of essay. Uh, so it doesn't really offer anything to this specific assignment. The assignment has a kind of middle section that is kind of relatively unfocused. Uh, so this is when we should obviously be now trying to move towards the actual essay question itself. Do people's self-esteem impact how they react to failure? But what we can sort of see is that the writer goes off on somewhat uh, irrelevant tangents talking about social media and how it impacts self-esteem. Uh, but there's also this sort of sentence here about how self-esteem can include many factors which really is kind of a, a kind of repeat of some of the stuff we've sort of said here uh, about how it can play an enormous role in human behavior. We should be getting more focused rather than less focused as we progress throughout this introduction. We do at points start to, towards the end, turn our attention to the issue at hand about how people react to failure. But it's not really until these final two sentences here that this issue is considered and even then at times it's not necessarily strongly related to the essay question itself. We do have a kind of setup of what the assignment aim is, which is fine, and it's kept relatively brief, but I think we could certainly be a little bit more explicit about maybe what we want to cover, uh, or even better would be to give insight into what we actually want to argue. This is the thesis statement that I mentioned, so that's something that we should be trying to do. So let's have a little look about how we can A, make this a more concise introduction, but also B, create a structure that's more clearer and on topic, uh, which sets up a nice argument to the question at hand. So here is that adapted version of that introduction, uh, which is now firstly shorter. It's just under 150 words, so it's not too long. It certainly tries to reserve as many words as possible uh, for the main body where we can elaborate on more key and pertinent details. So what we've done is we've just opened up the topic with the definition that was originally given and kind of made lip service to the idea about how it can have a pervasive influence over human behavior, which is basically what was said up here, but this feels more uh, vague and a bit colloquial, but also by just offering a citation, it just sort of shows that our ideas are well backed up by sources. And then we get to our middle section here, which sets up the essay question at hand. It sets up the problem that our essay question concerns. And in comparison to the original version, we've kept much more explicitly on topic to the issue of self-esteem and failure. But nonetheless, there are semblances of information that were retained from the original version. So like, for example, here, it's noted that self-esteem is unique to each individual. Well, what we've done here is just try to be more explicit regarding the sort of scientific way of explaining that. But also I've added in some additional verbiage that really tries to move the narrative forward towards the problem at hand. So I've just kind of continued on this issue to steer towards the focus of failing a test, for example. Whilst in the original version, it kind of steered it onto issues of mental health, which weren't particularly relevant. And then just to move this further forward towards the focus of the question, which is how people react to failure, we've talked about ways in which people might react to failure that reflect self-esteem being protected or attempted to be restored. And then also we've then gone a bit further to note that people do react to failure in different ways, which is part of what the essay question is about. How can we explain how people react to failure? And therefore, all of this therefore sets up our final section of the introduction, which is to give insight into what we're looking to do or give insight into what we're looking to argue. So what I've just done here is just give an insight into what our kind of thesis statement, our overall argument for this essay is going to be. Uh, and so this is a more explicit statement of what we're really looking to intend to support in our, our essay, rather than just a more general statement that ultimately doesn't really give any insight into what actually might be covered or what actually might be argued in the introduction. So this is this original version is something you should try and avoid doing. Although certainly you are setting up the essay question, you're doing so in a way that doesn't really provide a, a strong structure or narrative going forward. It's not really setting any sort of tone for the reader to grasp onto to understand where you might be wanting to go with your essay. Whereas in this version, 
now we've got a focus of which we can then hopefully go towards in our main body uh, looking to support throughout uh, and that will give the writing a much clearer flow and structure that's easier for the reader to follow so there we have it some simple tips for you to consider when writing your next introduction i hope you found that useful and if you appreciate this video do consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel so you can keep up to date with the latest content Thank you for watching the Psychology Debrief. If you have any suggestions for new topics, quizzes, or any other content psychology related, feel free to get in touch via email or Twitter. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye!